Hey there, in this video we'll be taking a look at the Logitech G600 Wired MMO Gaming Mouse. So let's get started. First things first, despite it being a gaming mouse, I didn't use it for gaming all that much. Instead, I used the buttons as hotkeys to different tools in my productivity software. But either way, using it in gaming or productivity software doesn't actually matter that much because it is functionally doing the same thing in all softwares. So with that out of the way, let's move on. In the box, you get the mouse and that's it, nothing else. Taking a closer look at the mouse, it has a braided cable with Velcro cable tie and it is certainly on the larger side and seemingly catered to palm grip. It is also built fairly well and uses decent plastic. Nothing surprising about the build if you're used to any similarly tiered Logitech mouse. Oh, and of course it has customizable RGB lighting. Now onto the most obvious thing, the whole bunch of buttons on the mouse. It has a total of 20 clickable buttons, including the scroll wheel side clicks and left, right, and middle clicks. Oh, and this unique ring finger button that you probably will take some time to get used to. Apart from that, there's not much else to note about the physical. Maybe just the fit, but that would vary a lot still depending on your hand size and shape. Just for reference though, for my small hands, it was fine after the initial adjustment, so no discomfort. Having said that though, while the comfort is fine, I'm still not exactly used to the things like the ring finger button and feeling out which button I'm pressing with my thumb, so I think I still need a little bit more time to really get used to those. Now let's move on to the software. This is where all the magic happens. First, in the Logitech gaming software, you can choose to store the settings inside the mouse or on your computer. If you do choose your mouse, you do lose out a few features such as app-specific profiles and more complex action assignments. Apart from that, for both internal and PC, you have three mouse modes that you can program differently. And you have the ability to customize every single button on the mouse. And if for some reason 20 button isn't enough, you can always use the G-Shift function, which gives you another layer of assignable function for all the buttons. Now as for what you can assign buttons to do, pretty much anything if you choose the PC storage. From launching apps, to media hotkeys, to typing out sentences. Basically anything you can think of. So it can be very powerful depending on how you program it and how you use it. On the other hand though, if you decide to store the settings on your mouse, the buttons can only be assigned as keystroke or mouse function. So basically, unless you're intending to use only basic functions, you'd probably want to use the PC storage instead. Now, so far it seems pretty good, but not all is perfect. There are a few things I did notice, though relatively minor in the big picture, and possibly only applying to my specific case. But I'm still gonna mention it because it was my experience. So the first thing I noticed is that I really miss the infinite scroll or the momentum scroll, which is available on a bunch of Logitech mouses. Probably not a big deal for others, especially in games, because you don't really use that, but it's something that I do miss on web pages. The second thing is DPI shift function. Basically, it's a button that you press and hold to shift down to a predetermined DPI setting. I actually use this DPI shift a lot on my G502 mouse, so having it as an option on G600 was great, but unfortunately, it's a bit buggy. Occasionally, the DPI shift will get stuck even after you let go. It can easily be fixed by pressing the button again, but still it's annoying and possibly a hindrance in games. So now finally, the price in conclusion. At the time of this recording, it's listed about 35 US dollar or 50 Canadian on amazon.com and .ca respectively. I personally think that at this price, it's kinda in the middle. Neither super great deal nor super bad deal just sitting on the okay section. So because of that, my conclusion is that if the features of the G600 fits your needs, then it's all right and I don't think it's a bad option. If you liked the video, consider leaving a thumbs up. If you want more, consider subscribing if you haven't. And if you have anything else to say, leave in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.